Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья! Hi everyone, thank you for watching this. Today Dostoevsky and Tolstoy are two of the most famous Russian writers. In 1880s, however, the picture was very different. Ivan Turgenev was the most famous Russian writer in the West. In fact, it was Turgenev who introduced both Dostoevsky and Tolstoy to a Western audience and made them popular. Today he's somehow obscured in the shadow of those two giants. In this video I'll try to change that by making a case as to why you should consider Turgenev on the same level as Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. When it comes to artistic ability, I think he's even better than both of them, especially in his writing about nature, failed romance, and parental love. In this video I'll try to justify my claim by looking at Turgenev's life, his writing style, and compare him to Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. Turgenev is sometimes considered a writer's writer. His most famous work, Fathers and Sons, I think had a big influence on both Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. It was published in 1862. Four years later, Dostoevsky published his most famous novel, Crime and Punishment, and seven years later, Tolstoy published his own masterpiece, War and Peace. So Turgenev was the first of those great Russian giants. I'll also explain why he's often called the most un-Russian Russian writer, almost French in his style. But first, let me look at his life. Ivan Turgenev was born in 1818, three years before Dostoevsky and ten years before Tolstoy, into a Nobel family in Uryol region of Russia. Turgenev's forefathers came from a Tatar background going back to the Mongol Golden Hordes. In fact, his name Turgenev is the Russian version of Turgen, which in Mongolian means fast. Ironically, Turgenev was said to be very indecisive, calm and measured, somewhat the opposite of his name. Turgenev's mother was a wealthy landowner who ruled her 5,000 serfs with an iron fist. Varvara Lutinov was said to be ugly and violent, who would fire her serfs for trivial matters like not smiling. She would make a ruthless businessman today. Turgenev's father married her for her wealth. Why not? When Turgenev was young, his father died, so he grew up in a household ruled by a tyrant woman. As a result, most of Turgenev's female characters appear very strong and decisive, while his male characters tend to be weak and indecisive. This is somewhat similar to Franz Kafka's fate as he grew up under the tyranny of his father, which influenced his writing immensely, as most of his characters are always persecuted for no reason, and often shackled in a nightmarish kind of world. As a result of his mother's authoritarian rule, Turgenev was very timid as a person, and some even considered him a coward. There's a story that when he was traveling to Germany on a boat that caught fire, Turgenev lost his shit and people made jokes about his cowardice. Whether it's true or not, it stuck. This is very important because for Russian men, the highest value is bravery. At one point, over a dispute when Tolstoy challenged him to a duel, Turgenev refused to take part. This was hugely important. To give you a bit of context, two of the most important literary figures in Russia, Alexander Pushkin and Mikhail Lermontov, died in duels because someone had insulted them. But Turgenev being very sensible, his European rational thinking I guess, avoided dangers and risks and that's one reason he's considered the most un-Russian Russian writer. He wasn't tough enough. Both Dostoevsky and Tolstoy were in the Russian army for a period of time, so they experienced how tough life could be. Another reason for that is that Turgenev learned to speak French, German and English and his family spoke mostly Russian and French. When he was 19 he spent three years studying philosophy in Berlin, Germany and he was impressed with Hegel's philosophy and the German scientific revolution and liberal ideas. So he wanted Russia to copy Germany and other European countries to become an advanced society. In contrast, Tolstoy was heavily influenced by the other German, the pessimistic philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer who in turn was more influenced by Eastern philosophy, namely the Buddhist idea of life being nothing but suffering. Hegel and Schopenhauer were both students of Kant, but Hegel leaned more towards rationality while Schopenhauer leaned more towards suffering. Dostoevsky, however, shunned Western philosophy as a whole. Both Tolstoy and Dostoevsky disliked Turgenev for his European liberal outlook. If you have to line up all three, Dostoevsky would be most towards Russian traditional values derived partly from the Orthodox Church and partly from the peasant's way of simple life. Tolstoy falls more in the middle as he was deeply into Russian way of life but also accepted European Enlightenment ideals of universalist and humanist values. Turgenev was more European liberal who wanted more freedom of speech for the artists and intellectuals. 
When Turgenev was around 25, he fell in love with a French-Spanish singer, Pauline Vaidort, when she was on tour in Russia. He was so in love that he followed her to Paris and lived with her and her husband in a kind of menage a trois. As a result, Turgenev lived most of his life in Europe, mainly in France, where he died in 1883, aged 64. He became a close friend of Gustav Flaubert and many Western writers, including Henry James. Turgenev was a very tall man. At 192 centimeters or 6'3", he towered both above Tolstoy at 181 cm and Dostoevsky at 169 centimeters. Not only that, Turgenev's brain weighed 2 kg or 7 pounds. The average male brain weighs just about 1.3 kg or 3 pounds. Dostoevsky should have felt sorry for Turgenev for carrying such a massive brain. Because Dostoevsky thought people with bigger brains suffered more in life. I guess he meant people who overthought things or too sensitive, which does not necessarily equate with people with bigger brains. It's true that happiest people are those who don't think much. And that's Dostoevsky's philosophy, if put very crudely and simply. Turgenev wrote seven short novels and great many short stories. I have a theory that tall men write shorter novels and short stories, while short men write long novels. Dostoevsky wrote great many long novels and he was 169 cm tall. This is not scientific of course, one of my favorite writers Raymond Carver was a very tall man who only wrote short stories. Then again Stephen King is like a giraffe who writes long novels. Turgenev's first book was a novella, The Diary of a Superfluous Man, published in 1850 when Turgenev was about 32 years old. It is about a lazy, good-for-nothing man who talks and talks but no action. But his most successful book was a collection of short stories titled A Sportsman's Sketches about the lives of ordinary Russian peasants. He published a few more short stories and novellas, but his most famous novel is Atsie Deti or Fathers and Sons published in 1862. I have dedicated a whole video on that. He wrote a few more novels and short stories. Apart from writing, he also translated Russian works into French and popularized Russian literature in the West. The fact that Russian literature is so loved all around the world and Tolstoy and Dostoevsky are household names partly thanks to Turgenev's effort. Unlike both Tolstoy and Dostoevsky, Turgenev was agnostic when it came to religion, so he lacked religious and political conviction. When Dostoevsky was young, he had radical ideas, but after his Siberian labor camp experience, he went back to his Russian and Orthodox values. On the whole, Dostoevsky was very much against westernization of Russia, and he believed in the simple lives of the Russian peasants, away from modernity in its rationalist philosophy. Tolstoy went wrong, he was Orthodox Christian and part of the Russian nobility, but later in life he became more of a humanist and promoted the rights of the poor as a kind of pacifist socialist. Turgenev, however, focused his effort on art. He championed artistic expression above politics and religion. He was influenced by the Hegelian idealism and understood that the purpose of art and writing was to discover the truth of the reality out there, just like an objective scientist might go about their work. Tolstoy, however, believed the purpose of art was to teach morality. Dostoevsky saw art as a medium to expose bad ideas and truth about negative side of human nature. So he used art for a psychological purpose to understand how human psyche was messed up. Turgenev wanted to discover reality as it was, while the other two wanted to teach morality through their stories. So their characters appear more decisive and proactive. Turgenev's characters, however, just like himself, appear less decisive or proactive. Of course, there are some exceptions. For the rest of this video, I'll look at Turgenev's writing style. He was an artist. Tolstoy is often described as a historian or sociologist whose focus was society, nations, families, so groups in general. Dostoevsky is seen as a psychologist who focused on the darkest recess of human psyche and what goes on inside the individual. Turgenev, however, was not interested in promoting virtue or righteousness as Tolstoy did, nor he promoted religious faith as Dostoevsky appeared to do in some of his novels. Turgenev's style of writing is much more objective, or you could say detached from his characters. He is like an umpire or a referee among his characters. 
In his first book, a collection of 25 short stories titled Sportsman Sketches, published in 1852, Turgenev writes about the lives of the Russian peasants told by a country landowner who lets the peasants tell their own stories without interfering or judging, in a very journalistic style. Turgenev's open-mindedness is apparent in all of his novels and short stories, and he lets his characters to grow naturally. The best example is in Fathers and Sons, he lets Bazarov, the hero, anti-hero, express himself freely and lets him to transform himself through the realities of life and obstacles of the world. Turgenev was influenced by the scientific approach prevalent in Europe at the time, that you don't interfere with your subject, but merely report it. He applied the scientific method in his writing. Most of his stories remain somewhat unresolved, which can be slightly frustrating for the reader. He presents his characters as if they are genuinely real people, and his story's endings, just like real life, doesn't give you that closure like Tolstoy's or Dostoevsky's novels do. Turgenev, like a good, responsible parent, likes all his characters and pays attention to their thoughts and feelings equally, no matter how good or bad they are. This ambivalence towards the good and bad is in stark contrast to both Tolstoy and Dostoevsky, who had strong convictions, either religious or ideological. In fact, having a religious or non-religious conviction in Russia is an important character trait. People want to know where you stand. This ambivalence hindered Turgenev's stance among other Russians, so he was labeled as coward, timid, and a man without backbone. You have to be tough in Russia, so it's not surprised that he left Russia for France, where being tough wasn't important. Instead, the French prized artistic sensibilities, and those who could sit at a cafe and talk all day, while the Russians were wrestling bears in their backyards. So Turgenev's artistic style is incredibly appealing if you're a writer. It's no surprise that many novelists who came after him consider him a far superior writer than Dostoevsky and Tolstoy, and that you can learn about the craft of fiction from him. Turgenev was a more romanticist writer in the mold of Pushkin, Lermontov, but also pessimistically a realist like his friend Gustave Flaubert, the author of Madame Bovary, who emphasized artistic style above politics. Turgenev said, I want the truth, not salvation. His lack of passion didn't help his novels, as most readers wanted a writer with a bit of conviction. Dostoevsky and Tolstoy wanted salvation. Therefore, their novels have a more passionate force driving them. Some readers find both Tolstoy and Dostoevsky a bit preachy in their novels, which can be a negative as well. Turgenev understood his lack of conviction himself, which he depicts beautifully in his novella The Diary of a Superfluous Man published in 1850, which is somewhat similar to Dostoevsky's Notes from Underground, and Tolstoy's The Death of Ivan Elich. It is a confession of a sick man on the verge of death, telling us about his miserable life, his falling in love with this beautiful girl next door who rejects him. The Russian term Lishni Chilevek, or extra or redundant person, became a Russian staple character for many authors. He is a man who thinks but cannot act, always in love with a woman but unable to attain her. This makes sense as Russians prize bravery, risk-taking and wrestling bear, not someone who lives in his head. Turgenev, in a famous speech in St. Petersburg, in which, by the way, Dostoevsky apparently attended, compared Hamlet, a thinking man, passive and pessimistic, with Don Quixote, a generous, optimist action man. Incidentally, Turgenev translated Don Quixote into Russian. Here's a quote. It seemed to us that all people, to a greater or lesser degree, belong to one of these two types, that almost every one of us resemble either Don Quixote or Hamlet. I personally am a Hamlet type without the princely title or fortune. The superfluous man also appeared in his first novel, Rudin, published in 1857, whose protagonist is described as, quote, a titan in word and pygmy in deed. So Turgenev was an artist who lacked the political and religious conviction of both Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. So if you like French literature, then Turgenev is perhaps the best Russian writer for you. Generational Divide Kafka's tyrannical father and Turgenev's ruthless mother, two figures who have influenced literature immensely. Of course, indirectly. Kafka turned his father to symbolize a brutal system who punished you for no reason. Growing up, Turgenev watched his mother's heavy-handedness in managing her state. He later focused his attention on how different generations view the world differently. 
In all his stories, Turgenev gives his characters a precise age. For Turgenev, your age determines how you see the world. As you age, your views also change. In Fathers and Sons, Turgenev pit young against the old. Parents impart their values and traditions to their children and the story continues. However, in Fathers and Sons, Turgenev introduces nihilism, which basically means destruction of all values and traditions. A radical young man named Bazarov wants to dismantle everything old in order to build something new. His extreme ideas represented the youth of Russia at the time, who wanted to transform Russia from a feudal society into a modern country that only valued things that were useful, a kind of utilitarian utopia of the greatest happiness for the greatest number. 19th century Russia was full of socio-economic change and upheavals. Russia was an extremely unequal society in which millions of peasants had little or no rights and lived in dire poverty. It was in 1861 when 30 million Russian serfs were emancipated. Turgenev's Fathers and Sons, published a year later, was set in 1859, just before the emancipation of serfs. The nihilists saw everything in terms of market value, which Turgenev saw as their biggest flaw. The nihilists considered art and sentimentality useless. Of course, when young, you have different priorities, and as you age, your values and priorities change with you. So Turgenev understood this and showed that radicals usually don't know reality very well. So in Fathers and Sons, he transforms Bazarov through many trials that he faces in real life. Falling in love, injuring a man, and understanding the fact that he alone could not change the world. Turgenev valued experience over ideas. It is through experience that a person grows, not through ideas. So you cannot discount older generations because their ideas are old. They have experienced life. So young people have ideas while old people have experiences. There is much to be learned. Turgenev says that once you are a parent, you are forever in love. And that's beautifully depicted in Fathers and Sons, a novel that is often described as a book about nihilism, but it's one of those books that will make you cry because it's about love. The magical power of love that melts everything else. Beauty and Failure Turgenev's stories are filled with unattained beauty or unrequited love. Again, you see a bit of Kafka here. He too failed in everything, at least in his lifetime. Turgenev's most famous short story is Pervaya Lubov or First Love published in 1860. When Zinaida, a 20-year-old beautiful girl moves next door, Vladimir, 16 at the time, madly falls in love with her. She however toys with his feeling like a cruel puppeteer. She asks him to prove his love by jumping a high wall. He jumps, falls down and loses consciousness. When he wakes up, Zinaida is kissing him. He is ecstatic. But then she leaves him. He is confused. Later he learns that he has a rival. Zinaida has another lover. Who could it be? Another boy? No, it's his own father. Vladimir has to grow really fast to understand what adult love really means. First love is such a fantastic story that I think it's on par with the best of Russian literature. In a letter, Turgenev said, it is the only thing that still gives me pleasure, because it is life itself, it was not made up. First love is part of my experience. This idea of unattained goal is present in most of Turgenev's novels. In Home of the Gentry, published in 1859, his protagonist fails to achieve his romantic quest and only contents himself with the memory of that love. In Fathers and Sons, Bazarov fails to achieve any of his goals. For Turgenev, there is never a happy ending when you fall in love or set yourself a goal to achieve things. Instead, one should cherish the here and now. Even the truth is often best untold. In his 1860 novel, On the Eve, a Russian girl, against the wishes of her family, falls in love with a Bulgarian man. After his death, however, she makes the heroic sacrifice by taking his body to the Balkans. And then she decides to disappear. The Bulgarian man is perhaps the strongest male character in all Turgenev's work. He depicts Russian men as weak while women slightly stronger. So Turgenev is one of the greatest writers of failure. Everything goes back to nature. Turgenev's description of nature is one of the defining features of his writing. 
His description is incredibly precise and succinct. He often uses birds as motive to describe human emotion as though a human heart has imaginary wings, but is always trapped inside a cage. What distinguishes him from other Russian writers is evocation of sadness. While other Russian writers wrote about the huge socio-political issues or even deeper psychological issues, Turgenev focused on the fleeting moments of human emotion, almost akin to the French writers like Marcel Proust. While his novels are short and to the point, he takes the reader right there when you can smell, touch, hear, and taste things. For example, in First Love, when the teenage boy confesses his love to the 20-year-old girl, instead of making her happy, she feels miserable. Why? She's conflicted because of another man, the teenage boy's own father. Seeing her unhappy, the boy says, I went on kneeling and looking at her with infinite distress. Every one of her words pierced my heart like a knife. At that moment, I would, I think, gladly have given up my life if only that could end her grief. I looked at her and still not understanding why she was so unhappy, conjured a vivid image of how, suddenly, in a paroxysm of ungovernable grief, she had walked into the garden and fallen to the ground as though mown down. All round us it was bright and green. The wind murmured in the leaves of the trees, now and then bending the raspberry canes above Zenaida's head. Somewhere doves were cooing and bees were buzzing, flying low from blade to blade over the sparse grass. Overhead the sky was blue and tender, but I felt terribly sad. Turgenev is a master of contrasting natural beauty with the upheaval of the human heart, the serenity of the outside world juxtaposed with what's going on on the inside in someone's heart. Human emotions are potently brought into a sharp focus by contrasting them to how beautiful everything is on the outside. This is very similar to his friend Gustav Flaubert's style of writing. Nature is so powerful that it overpowers rationality. A good example is in Fathers and Sons. The mere sight of blood transformed Bazarov, one of the most hard-headed of his heroes, during a duel when he injures his enemy, Pavel. Turgenev uses violence as the biggest teachable moment in the life of the young hero. Quote, there are turning points in life, points when the past dies and something new is born. Woe to the man who doesn't know how to sense these turning points and either holds on stubbornly to a dead past or seeks prematurely to summon to life what is not yet fully ripened. Turgenev in his final novel, Virgin Soil, published in 1877, takes us back to nature. The novel tells the story of a group of idealist young men who reject the luxurious city life and go to the countryside to live a simple life among the peasants. That reflected how he felt about nature. It is nature that we have come from and that's where Turgenev sends his last bunch of characters. To conclude this video, let me say this. Turgenev is the only author whose novels I have read twice and in some cases three times. For me, Fathers and Sons and First Love are two of the most beautiful works of Russian literature. He said so much in such short novels. Today he lacks the glamour and appeal of Dostoevsky or Tolstoy, but he deserves a lot more attention. I'll leave you with this quote from Fathers and Sons. A man is capable of understanding anything, how the ether vibrates and what's going on in the sun, but how any other man can blow his nose differently from him, that is, he is incapable of understanding. It took me hours to read, research, write, and produce this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And also if you like, of course, you can buy me a coffee on my coffee page. As always, thank you for watching.